good day viewers. This is Healing the Hurting, Fulfilling God's Purpose, Glorifying God. Today is a beautiful day. And I want to thank God for your life that you're watching today's episode. I believe that the Holy Spirit has prepared something so wonderful, so beautiful and precious for you. And I'm thankful to God that the enemy could not cheat you and hinder you from watching this program. I pray that as you open up your heart and your spirit to receive from God today, the Lord will fill you to overflowing with the riches of his glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Once again, thank you for being part of today's episode. Now, we, I want to encourage you to please kindly call your friends, relatives, anyone you can call, everybody you can call to watch this program with you. If they're not close by you, ask them to please log in on to Media and go to live telecast and all go to YouTube and watch from watch our, uh, Dove Media, Dove TV right away. And they will be blessed. Or they tune into Dove TV from the, on the television. I pray God will bless them also as they watch. And there will be testimonies on their lips in Jesus' name. Now, we are starting another series today with a wonderful man of God. I'm sure those who have been very conversant with our program will, might be able to recognize his face and also perhaps his voice. And you'll be blessed by his ministry and um, just relax and be seated and look forward to a wonderful time in God's presence. We're going to be praying now. After the prayer, we'll go on a short break. When we return, I will read a passage or two. And then Pastor, the guest, wonderful man of God, a very dear friend, a very, very precious brother, will be taking us up on the topic that we have prepared. We'll be looking at the fullness, maximizing or tapping into the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Tapping into the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You will be blessed. Now let's pray quickly. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this wonderful time. We thank you for another session of Healing the Hurting. We thank you for the past episodes. We thank you for all the wonderful anointed guests you have used to bless us. And we thank you for all our viewers who have been watching this program. We appreciate you for giving us these precious viewers. We are praying that Lord you will bless them mightily. You will refresh every one of us and renew our strength. Let there be healing for the hurting today in the name of Jesus. Everyone hurting in one area or the other, let them receive your healing touch by your mercies. Let your grace flow over them and anoint our uh, all of us who will be ministering today, anoint our viewers, anoint everybody in the name of Jesus. Do what only you know can do. Let the hurting be healed today by your mighty power and take all the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. Now we'll go on a short break. When we return, our guests will take over from there. Well. <music> Welcome back. Once again, this is Healing the Hurting, Fulfilling God's Purpose, Glorifying God. Thank you for staying tuned. We have in the house a wonderful man of God, a precious friend, a dear brother, and uh, a great vessel in the hands of the great, 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 great mighty God. And that's in the person of Pastor or Evangelist Shita, Buega uh, Shita. Uh, today, I wanted to just get excited as I invite him to take over from, to, to speak to us. Now, Pastor Boyega, Evangelist Chita, is as popularly called, is the, uh, the president and by God's grace, the lead minister, the lead pastor, and the pastor, the, uh, the, the founder of um, Kingdom Power Ministries International, based in the UK, and they have their branch in Nigeria. Um, it's an evangelistic ministry, and also do a lot of prayers and intercession, ministering to people's needs in several places of the world. It's a hot kick and a well sought after speaker, conference speaker, and revival minister of God all over the world. So, Pastor, you are welcome. Thank you very much. We are so pleased to have you again Amen. today. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank you. You are welcome again. Hallelujah. Thank um, you. 
today we are looking at the topic maximizing. tapping into the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Or we want to say maximizing the fullness of the Holy Spirit. But basically tapping into the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And I want us to look at a passage. Um, it's the a very profound message that Jesus left with the disciples when he was departed. Mm -hmm. And that's found in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. It says there, it says, But you will receive power and ability. I'm reading from Amplified Version. Mm -hmm. I love it. It says, But you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses to tell people about me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. Mm. The fullness of the Holy Spirit. This is the expectation of Jesus, mm -hmm. expecting us to tap into the power yes. that the Holy Spirit brings into our lives. Mm. And you know, if a lot of us tap into that power, it, many times that we are hurting, that we are complaining, that we are grumbling, that we are mumbling, and we are distressed, mm. yeah. God will take care of it. Correct. Absolutely. Over to you, sir. Absolutely correct. Thank you, uh, Pastor Funshu Adedai, for this privilege to be on this uh, platform again. Uh, thank God for what God is using this platform to do all over the world. Mm. Lives are being touched and transformed. And we give God all the glory for that. Yeah, this uh, topic uh, arising today is uh, very important. Uh, tapping into the fullness of the Holy Spirit, uh, maximizing mm. the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Um, I look at it in uh, uh, two major dimensions, mm. really. Uh, the Holy Spirit is um, the ultimate, is the best gift that Jesus gave to the church. You know, he said, um, if I don't go, the comforter cannot come. Mm. He said that I will send you another comforter, mm. Paracletus, that is someone who has the same characteristics, characteristics and attitude like me, someone who is a replica of myself. You know, and some Bible scholars even believe that the Holy Spirit is, is, is Jesus in the spirit form. You know, uh, you know, Jesus in the spirit form. Jesus is God in the flesh form. Mm. The Holy Spirit is Jesus in the spirit form or mm. God in the spirit form. Mm. So Jesus handed the church over to the Holy Spirit, mm. you know, like to take care of the church, basically. So two dimensions. Uh, Acts 10, 38 says, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then he went about doing good and healing all them that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So two things we see there. Number one, he went about doing good, and then healing and deliverance from oppression of the devil. So the Holy Ghost manifests in two major forms. Under each of these forms, there may be subdivisions. The first is he went about doing good. That's character. That's fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, faithfulness, you know, humility, etc., etc. The fruit of the Spirit. So he went about doing good. That's the fruit of the Spirit. And then healing all those who are oppressed of the devil. That's the gift of the Spirit. You know, we talk about the gifts of healing, gift of working of miracles, mm -hmm. faith, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. And this is to edify, bless, and heal the church, to heal the hurting in a nutshell. So these are the two major manifestations of the Holy Spirit that God wants every believer to tap into this fullness, the fruit of the Spirit and also the manifestation of his gifts that ministers healing to the church, deliverance, peace, etc. Then you look at in our world today, and that's why I wanted to, so I intend to sub-topic or sub this major topic yeah. into much is expected. expected. Okay. I look into the world today and I see that um, those who are not even filled with the Holy Spirit, to an extent, 
they have a form of, uh, will I say a form of uh, moral standard, good attitude, and then you look at believers in the church who are filled with the Holy Spirit, they are supposed to even bring forth more manifestations. I give us an example in the Bible. Um, first, let me read Luke chapter 12, verse 48. It says, to whom much is given, Luke 12, 48, much is also expected. He says, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. But for unto whosoever much is given, for him also uh, be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. So to us as believers, much has been given to us. Who is that much? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the, is the embodiment of the much given to us and the much is expected in form of the character that's the fruit of the Spirit and of course the manifestation of the gift of the Spirit. Yeah. But we do not see ourselves, majorly speaking, we do not see ourselves as in a lot of us believers are not tapping into the fullness of the manifestation in form of the fruit and the gift of the Spirit. And that's why every time I read the story of Cornelius, it's a big challenge to me, big challenge. In Acts chapter 12, no, I beg your pardon, chapter number 10, uh, we are familiar with that story. There are two people in the Bible I see that before they got the Holy Spirit, there was a description of their lives, and that's very challenging. And then you compare that side by side with those of us who are supposed to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and it's like we are far away, we have a long way to go. And that's the challenge today before we pray for those who need uh, visitation in their lives on this platform. Acts chapter 10, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, mm. a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man. Number one, devout man. I want us to take note of that. Number two, one that feared God. Number three, he feared God not alone but with all his house. That means he didn't fear God alone. He mobilized his whole house to fear God. Cornelius was not born again. He hadn't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But look at this dimension, devote. Hmm. The word devote means loyal. It means dependable. It means trustworthy. He was devote. Devoted to what? Devoted to God. He didn't, he didn't know Jesus Christ, but he was so devoted to God that he didn't miss hour of prayer. Now, let's go over it again. Number one, he was devote. Number two, he feared God. Number three, he feared God with all his house. Number four, he gave alms. He was a giver. Today, believers are still struggling to give. Some believers still tell you, they still give you reasons why they have to give. They're analyzing whether we should pay tight or we shouldn't pay tight. They're analyzing whether we should give offering. Who's going to take the offering? Does God come down from heaven and take the offering? All those flimsy and baseless, you know, challenge in the area of giving. Here's a man who did not have the Holy Spirit at the time. Yeah. But the Bible says he was a stupendous, generous arms giver. He gave to just cause for the kingdom of God, and yet he wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit. Number five, not only does he give arms, number five, the Bible says he prayed always. Yeah. He prayed always. Now, given that he didn't even know Jesus, so he probably wasn't praying in the name of Jesus, but it's to his credit that he loves God, he prayed always. Now, how many... Christians, how many believers pray always? Paul said, pray without ceasing. And one of the benefits of the Holy Ghost, which we'll see in the coming episode, is that the Holy Ghost energizes, inspires our prayer life. Without the Holy Ghost, we don't have a dynamic prayer life. Many years ago, before I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I struggled to pray for half an hour. I just got converted from Islam to Christianity at the time, and I was struggling to know who the Holy Spirit was. You know, we were taught back those days in Islam that um, God had no child, etc. So I was coming into Christianity and I was trying to adapt to a person of the Holy Spirit. So for one and a half years, I didn't have the Holy Spirit. So I struggled to pray for half an hour. Hmm. But after I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, my goodness, Pastor Funjo, it was a different ballgame. I can never forget this happened in uh, Ife. In ECU, you were, you were our leaders those days um, in ECU. Shortly before I came to see you the other time, I had just been filled with the Holy Ghost and my prayer life went into a mm. different dimension. Mm. I saw that I could go on for one hour, two hours, mm. three hours, sometimes several mm. hours, 
praying in the spirit mm. and communing with God after the Holy Ghost came upon me. Mm. This is one of the benefits of the Holy Spirit. And here we see Cornelius prayed to God always and he didn't have the Holy Spirit. Now let me round up with this. Cornelius even had vision of angel. <laughs> this is amazing. He says, the Bible says in verse 3, he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius, and he looked unto him and was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, your prayers and your arms are come up for memorial mm. before God. That's a man mm. who was not even saved, who was not baptized in the Holy Ghost. God said, your, your arms, your giving has come as a, as a memorial. How much more those of us who are filled with the Holy Spirit? Mm. Now, the point here is this. God told him, you are too good to go to hell. What you are doing, Cornelius, is almost parallel to what a true Christian should be doing. So you are too good for us to allow you to go to hell. The only thing missing is that you don't have Christ Jesus. But every other thing we approve, heaven approved of Cornelius. So he sent for Peter, and Peter came and prayed and led him to Christ. Then verse 44 to 46 of the same scripture, while Peter was praying, the Holy Ghost fell upon them, all of them. So what is the point here? Look at his life before the Holy Spirit came. One could almost say he had a fabulous, fantastic spiritual life before the Holy Spirit came on him. Mm -hmm. But then that's the tip of the iceberg. Imagine Cornelius after the Holy Ghost came on him. He would have just gone on fire for God. Mm. If he did this before the Holy Ghost came, how much more after the Holy Ghost came? This is a challenge to every Christian listening out there. You are filled with the Holy Ghost, much is expected. It's appalling to see today that people make statements like, um, and he calls himself a Christian, and they call themselves Christians. Because some of us believers have given opportunity to the people out there to blaspheme the name of God. You know, we've seen in churches, the other day my father-in-law uh, in his local church, I don't want to mention the name of the church, a, a local church, a born-again church, spirit-filled church, he went for Holy Communion, and uh, he was sitting in the elder section. As he was going out to pick the Holy Communion bread and wine, he came back in a few seconds. One of the guys who also came to pick Holy Communion was walking back and picked his phone. And, you know, I was calling him. I couldn't reach him. So I called my mother-in-law, and she picked and said, oh, daddy's phone has been stolen. Where? He said, in church during Holy Communion service. Wow. Ah, I wanted to cry. I said, what's going on? What's going on? Now, this is just to mention few of the things that is appalling going on. And I look at it and I say to myself, are we really filled with the Holy Spirit? <laughs> is this the same Holy Which Ghost Spirit, the, Cornelius received? Is this the same Holy Paul, Ghost Peter. Paul received, Peter received? Is, is mm. it the same Holy Spirit? Much is expected of us, brethren. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. God expects more from us, more than what Cornelius, Cornelius represented. In the coming episode, I'll be talking about um, the Ethiopian eunuch who wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit and came all the way from Ethiopia to Jerusalem. Three weeks of journey by road to come and worship, thirsty for God, and yet he wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit. Ethiopian eunuch. And to mention just few, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Maximize the presence of the Holy Ghost in your life. Take advantage of the Holy Ghost in our lives. Let's demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit. Let's demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what the world is actually waiting to see. I pray God of heaven will reach out to everyone under the sound of my voice. And everyone who is out there who is hurting, uh, we will pray for you right now. Pastor, we should go ahead and pray. For before, before we pray, there's something I want us to hide because yeah. I want us to pray about it. Okay, sir. You know, we are talking about uh, much is expected in terms of the area of the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. Um, expected in terms of the gift, of the gift of the Spirit. Now, we have not spoken about the gift yet. We are talking about the fruit of the, the Spirit. Yeah. Even some of the gifts that manifested in God. Because vision is one of the gifts. Revelation are gifts. Absolutely. Okay. Now... And he was not yet baptized in the Holy no. Spirit. He was not even saved. He was not saved. But he was close to God somehow because he sought after God Absolutely. in the way that he understood Absolutely. that God could be sought after. Absolutely. His heart yearned for God. His, his soul longed mm -hmm. and panted after the Lord yeah. as the deer panted after, after waters. Water books, yeah. And God revealed himself to, to him. him. I said, those who draw near, who seek me, yes. will find me early. early. 
okay? And those who draw near to me, I will draw, draw nigh, nigh to, to them. them. So in his own little way, mm. he drew nigh to God. Yeah. And God also helped him to draw nigh yeah. to him. Yeah. God drew him nearer Correct. to him. So now, but the second thing I want to bring out of this is that when you look at verse, um, at verse 25, mm. okay? So I saw something interesting here. I, I've been reading this passage and I'm seeing something different there. It says, and Peter was, as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him mm. and fell down at his feet. At his feet. Mm. Humility. Wow. Humility. Absolutely. That was a God given grace unto the humble. humble. No wonder Cornelius was able to receive grace. My goodness. Grace for salvation. Correct. Grace for baptism of the Holy Spirit. Correct. Now, what he lacked, he received. Correct. Because he humbled himself. himself. Mm. And that's the fruit of the Spirit. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Now, you said much is expected. That's right. Humility is expected. Mm. Much is expected. Before you start going to the big things of healing the sick, yeah. of casting out the devils, yeah. Yeah. what about those much things yeah. of drawing close? Drawing close, yeah. More close of the discipline mm -hmm. of devotion to God. That's correct. You know, you use the word devoted. You say lawyer. Yeah, it's you lawyer. Know, being loyal to God, mm. even in following Him, yes. loyal to God in obeying Him, mm. loyal to God in not wanting to displease My Him, goodness. to live a holy life, mm. and say, "Look, I'm not going to make God unhappy." Mm. No, that's loyalty. Absolutely. That the person that I love or I want to be, I will not make Him unhappy. Mm. I will not display. I will not do things mm. that will make you to feel embarrassed. That's, right. that's loyalty. loyalty. How many of us do things today that embarrasses God? Oh my goodness. God have mercy. Mm. How loyal are we to the Almighty God, to our Lord, God our Savior, mm. the one we call our Savior? Mm. Are we loyal to Him mm. in our work with Him? Mm. You know. So when we're talking about healing the halting today, mm. there are people who are hurting themselves, mm. not the devil hurting them, hurting, hurting themselves, themselves because of the ways of their life. Mm. Of our, the way we live our yeah. lives. But yeah. if only we can come back to him yes. and live right, yeah. how God will turn things around. Amen. Much indeed is expected. Is expected. Mm. Much is expected. Praise God. Praise oh, God. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Now. Thank God for his message. We're going to pray now. And uh, by God's grace, we'll continue from wherever we stop today. Let, let us pray. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you, God in heaven, first of all, for those who are watching us who have not known Jesus, Lord, we pray that you will cause Christ to touch their hearts. And as they open their hearts, may Jesus come into their hearts and be the Lord of their lives. Amen. Let there be spiritual healing in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray for those who are hurting physically, spiritually, emotionally, send healing to them right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we pray for total recovery and healing for all such people right now. Amen. In Jesus' mighty Amen. name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Lord, I will pray for all our viewers and ourselves today yes, that the grace not to betray the Lord Amen. with our manner of lives. Yes. The grace to, to do that which is expected of us, to Amen. live up to expectation mm -hmm. that they give to us afresh. Amen. We rebuke every spirit of disloyalty to yes. God. Yes, Lord. Every spirit of betrayal. <laughs> Of the, of, the, of the grace of God in our lives, the betrayer of the, 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 the mind of Christ towards us, how God feels towards us. I pray God will rebuke that spirit Amen. in the name of Jesus, Amen. that all our viewers and ourselves yes. will become loyal, Amen. will become committed, Amen. devoted to the Most High God sold out to God and humble mm -hmm. and that the fruit of the Spirit shall be seen in our lives. Mm -hmm. Help us, Lord. Yes. We just look up to you. you we will not betray you with the resources you've put in our care. Ah, we will not betray you, you with the grace of God yes. you have released unto our lives. The riches of your glory mm -hmm. that you have given to us to make avail ourselves of. We pray that God will glorify you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Sure. Glory be to your name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. We have prayed. And those who are giving the letter to Christ, forgive them and restore them yes. and save their souls in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Jesus, they have prayed. Amen. Amen. Viewers, we want to thank you for being part of today's program. We are so grateful that you watch this program today. And we pray that, Lord, they will bless you. The Lord will do a new thing in your life. That much is expected, you, will not, you and I will not fail God again. We will be failing God before, we will not fail Him any longer. That we we'll begin to live up to expectation of Christ Amen. by the Holy Spirit from today in Jesus' name. Thank you. And please help others to stand for God. Don't be among those who pull them down and 
among those that they want to cut off from their hands and from their eyes. I pray that God will help us to live right. Mm -hmm. Please join us same time next week on Healing the Hurting. You'll be joining us with Pastor Buega, Pastor Shita on the mm -hmm. that day. The Lord bless you in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. Have a wonderful day.